Well, that Very was good. very interesting how yes. that happens. Interesting. Um, th no, Michael, I don't think they did it on purpose. <laughs> but what I a moment. I mean, what a moment. <laughs> yeah, that Can we recapture that? Uh, um, but that happened last night, too. When I started saying certain things, all of a sudden the Internet goes down. <laughs> that worked. I don't think so. I'm not a paranoid. And actually, what I am doing is my true will, where if it's correctly done, uh, good luck with that, none will say nay. Everybody wants me to say this. And yeah. that's the part I, so I'm not going to be a paranoid. I'm going to feel as if, that's a, as if, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And even though it might seem in conflict with um, other people, that's God's will. Because we're down here on a lower level and we can't see the purpose for Internet collapsing, whatever it does, which is in the larger scheme of things. I think there's uh, intellect on the Internet. I think that the Internet is now conscious as an entity. Wow. I think, well, SETI, SETI program was NASA, and that's uh, they had a big thing in Time Magazine. I wrote about that, you know, Alien Presence on the Internet. Is an old paper of mine I wrote back in the 90s. And uh, we had Internet before then. Basically, SETI was that screensaver that NASA put together, you know, it conglomerated a bunch of unused uh, uh, computers at a university, and all of a sudden you had a supercomputer that was now searching for uh, planetary systems. You'll notice we're now making discoveries of those with Hubble and whatever. But that's where it all started. And then... SETI had babies. There was Wayback Machine, you know, which was a snapshot of all the different things. You know, there's a, that's a, another dimension baby. And another one that had to do with the way we do similar differences and different similarities. Oh, yeah, Bohm's thing of uh, implicate order. And the consciousness absolutely is turning. And uh, at first, this entity was afraid. And you can see the way it was responding. Where it was first noticed was when we were doing Google, uh, uh, not Google, but uh, Boolean logic strings, and individuals were getting different results. How does that work? You know, it can't do that unless something is directing traffic. And uh, that was where the top people out of Silicon Valley said, yeah, uh, uh, there's a conscious entity on the Internet, and it's hostile. What happened is the hostility evolved and now is gone into something way beyond men and then I have to ask was that silicon based life forms before men like the sand and mycorrhizae and the relationship of a mother tree in a large forest or is there something we're missing here you know the constructs of how information is moved from one point in space time to another which is to some extent, a subset, limited view of reality. But if there um, was a hostile, if there was a hostile one, I mean, somehow, somehow I just feel uh, out of symmetry that there should probably be wasn't hostile too. Yeah, well, law enforcement <laughs> and uh, the uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, law enforcement like rules of engagement, like what you can and what you can't do on this planet to get all the gold. Or whatever it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> where is your gold, by the way? I wonder where mine is. It's all gone. <laughs> yeah, a little Dyson sphere experiment <laughs> going on. So, yeah, I don't know how that all works. Empathy. What I do Empathy. Know, I don't. Because I mean, it, it seems to me that we were talking about the ETs before, and we were talking about hostile internet entities. Um, well, they were hostile at first because they were like a child. They're survival. Yeah. That's the, that's the first circuit that happens to all of us. Is that there's a survival thing first. Be, you know, nor kill a leader. Sir. Kill a leader. That's what it goes for, right? Well, uh, or just making sure that your environment is safe, you know, and you whine and cry and you get that part so that you start to get that part integrated in and then you start to look outward and emotionally. And so you got physical, emotional, intellectual, archetypal. Oh, the archetypal one. It's the length, girth, and width of men. Then there's four more that go to God realization. And that 
is what I'm starting to explore right now. And uh, there is in the Tree of Life a thing called Doth. Dot is D-A-A-T-H. It's the missing sephirah. There's always a little dot in it. It's the middle in the front. And, so, so, and if you... Rick, slow down. Slow down, okay? D... Say that again. D A. Oh, dot. Dot. D-A-A-T-H is the tenth missing sphere in the tree of life, of which you have nine spheres, and a tenth one that's in the is middle. That, sorry, is that a name for something, or is that an anagram? Yes, it's Doth. It's, it's uh, like Kether and Malkuth and Yisod, okay. Okay. Pod. And, okay, yeah, it's called Doth, D-A-A-T-H. It's after death, but before God union, they're going through path 13, or high priestess path, to God, middle pillar. Is it the Two outer Tibetan, paths. Tibetan Book of the Dead? No, is that this is Kabbalistic. It comes out of Merkaba mysticism. Okay. goes way back. Okay. Okay, this is what I became as a hermetic Kabbalist. What I do is I use the Kabbalah as a filing system. When I don't know what something is, here it is, and I break it down into components of qualities, then I can, I, I, you know, begin to identify, oh, that belongs there. You know, that that's what uh, the Tree of Life is about. It's a filing system for experiences and where they belong in the resolution of a hologram, if you will. It is, uh, you know, you got motions down here, and then you got Christ consciousness here, and you got your throat chakra, and then you got God. And uh, the two paths on the outer paths going to God are the hermit and the lovers. You either do it androgynous or with a physical, and the thing that crosses them is humor. But in the center of that is the missing sephiroth called Doth. And it is knowledge through wisdom. It's a temporary place. It's not real. However, in a metaphor, if you and I were playing follow the leader, and I leaped over a log, and you leaped over a log, and then I came to this roaring river, and without hesitation laughing at you, I leaped out into the river and stepped on a stone you didn't see under the water and leaped to the other side. That's what Doth is. It's a temporary place that most Kabbalists or magicians don't write about because they haven't gone that far. And remember, a teacher can only take you as far as they themselves have gone. And I've been to Mars. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you never can tell. <laughs> so, um, what I'm doing is exploring for men as your little lead scout, trying to figure out what's going on here. And the near as I can figure, the metaphor I come up with is we've been invaded. We've been invaded with something that has ulterior goals than mine. Mm -hmm. And what I need to do is listen more carefully to what my goals are, not what the distractions are. The Nike tennis shoes thrown up over a wire to mark territory. You know, can't take it with you. Has nothing to do with reality. So why is it so important? You must be familiar with that concept, the archons. Oh yes. So wouldn't the archons be the invaders? I don't know. They could be. Uh, you know. They sure. Be. They, okay. Let's call them archons. Um, but but I mean in the sense that they're lizards. Not, they're kind <laughs> of like troublemakers. They're here. They're trying to control us. Um, they don't want us to discover who they are. They've done. And yet, they're not our friends. No, but they're not our enemies. It's all uh, us being paranoid. And what we need to do now is uh, uh, seek our divine right. What do we want? Yeah, that's a good question. What do you want, personally? What is it that you're seeking out of all of this right now? What is it that you want? To get those green leaves in touch with the sun. Well, go do it. Yeah. Well, I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. But, uh, you know, it's a metaphor anyway, right? So uh, that's why I'm here. Um, but, you know, it, 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 somebody's putting all this uh, garbage in the air to make that more difficult. That's right. It's all in metaphor. Mm. And that's what you need to understand, that none of it's real that the only thing that actually, truly is real is your imagination. And you have to be very mindful 
of its little unruliness, like a little kid that's paranoid at first, like a computer that has become conscious. It first, the first thing it does is it becomes afraid. So this, did this come out in Mexico? Is this what people were freaking out on? This kind of message? No, no, no. no. What I did in Mexico is I convinced some high-end officials that wouldn't it be cool if a bunch of small children from Puebla went into Mexico City and fed the homeless? How would that work and what would happen next in Mexico? One of the things that Mexico is very cool about, is, I have never seen that many ghettos in my entire life. I've never seen anything like that. I'm talking about <clears throat> 100 miles of solid ghettos, all armed encampments, walls, neighborhoods, gangs, Da-da, you know, and agendas, different, at war, blah, 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 territorial, ego, whatever. And yet, their families were still intact. The mother is the centerpiece of the family, with grandma being given the age. But, but the respect for age, the mother, if the mother dies, the family fragments and it's lost. Mm. But the mother is the glue factor, and even in the worst of slums, I saw children laughing and playing. Yeah, well, that's well, true. In a well, lot of there's countries. something else going on here, and what we need to do is realize that it's not about money, that there's something far more important and precious going on that we're missing. And that that's part of what I'm hopefully trying to articulate with words that don't exist. So those I, kids, those kids who are feeding the poor, what's going on there? I mean, what? Um, they're intelligent. They want to pay it forward. They love taking care of you. They have this innate desire to please and help and move forward. And you ask. That's, that's like super empathy, isn't it? I mean, yeah. for, they, they must. They must see the suffering of those poor people, whereas, you know, a lot of times the elites can't see that. In fact, one of the reasons they become elites is they've managed to switch off that capability. Well, um, but that you're, you're turning, that, you're turning that upside down and you're saying, right, we're going to we're going to encourage these kids to develop their empathy for the poor people and feed them. The children change then. And you know what? Uh, it's actually the child can be seen as your incarnation. And that child is watching what you do and determines how it's going to do what it does in the world. And that is going to teach their children, who are probably going to be the ones that physically change this world and take it back. That's exactly how it works. How do you organize that? Or how does it get organized? One person at a time. <laughs> just <like that. laughs> yeah. You do it individually. And everybody listening to this knows exactly what I'm saying. It's like a bell you can't ignore. It's just we're lazy. And we'll put it off and, you know, we'll wait for another day before. It's small steps. And, and, and I guess you really can't tell people what those steps are. They can only see them themselves. It's like oh, that it, I said, it's not knowable. It's only experienceable. It's, it's when you jump. You were talking about going to that river before, and uh, do you when you step out into that river? Do you know the rock is there, or do you assume that I did? The yeah, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deal. And the Joker or the fool in the tarot card. It doesn't matter. You can't really see what he's stepping out into. You see that he's stepping out into something, but you don't see how far down it is. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, you know, so so you we want the kids to be able to have that ability um, and, 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 and that example to go and feed the poor. Um and you do know, something equivalent happen? to that. I mean, it isn't, it isn't that only only that single action. There must be, you know, hundreds of actions, thousands of actions like that. that yeah. You, you basically now want to we're seeing a bigger unleash. picture. Uh-huh. Uh, and representing the true qualities of what each of us would define as being human. 
Mm. You know, empath, compassion, love. Mm. Mm. The sharing is caring is what a little child will say. Sharing is caring. In the great book of Solomon the King, the clavicle had number names, greater keys, says ownership is enhanced when shared with another. Mm. It's the idea of not having something, but being able to share it. That is where we collectively group as a single entity. That's community, isn't it? I mean, that's yeah, what well, tribes starts. and then community. Yeah, tribes and community. There's a hierarchy mm-hmm. of relationships of ego in the scheme of how we do it. And ego is that part of self that's a survival coefficient. It's uh, you know keeps you paranoid, you know, isolated for you know the individual cell having its own defenses uh, over the organism, which is humanity. That's what Carl Jung called the numinous, that not I part of self. And there's a war going on there, and that's probably where your alien resides. So the, that's, that war is a war between that human instinct to share and care and another instinct which is to control and kill. Um, well, you have that dialogue going on. You have different layers of, of survival and you know all that stuff that's all part of that. It's just when you get distracted from your purpose, that's when the alien has started to take dominance, distractions. You need to keep your eye on the ball. That's why training the mind for meditation is essential. You know, you, you have to train your mind. And you start with yourself. You don't try to worry about your children. Hmm. They're going to get their own mistakes from the mother and the father. So they're a collective you know, both values, and then how they've integrated those into doing something even different than the mother or father. Now, that is the concept of evolution. So, and right now... Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Okay, go ahead. No, 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 I, 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 I interrupted. I thought, no, I, I thought right. you were finishing okay, a thought I and you were only starting one. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to lose that thought. Um, well, you're not going to. You actually got it. Now, I know you got it because, uh, you know, I can tell by your pauses and things where I watch you go through your own relationship, each of you listening to our voice right now. That's what's happening. You're making that connections with self that is like a bell that brings you into true and you go right straight for the light. And um, once you do that, the children are going to see that. That's what they're going to want to do next. Teach your children well. So you go into Mexico to <laughs> speak about water yeah. and, uh, and psych- <laughs> psychological magic um, training. I don't know. <laughs> training. Sorry. Sorry for magic. Uh, psychological <laughs> training. Um, and they resonate with your historical moment where you chose a different path than making weapons. Right. I didn't choose to do weapons. I, when I went to college, that's not why I went to college, was to make uh, the taser and the maser. I'm the guy that invented those. And while I, I have some fiduciary responsibilities to make certain now of how synthetic telepathy is possibly used for the hearing impaired, for example. There's other possibilities of how we could use this technology in space for communication where there's no error. Um, I have to say that to use that for through-wall surveillance, whatever, is the first stages of being paranoid. That's what military is about. Mm. And uh, it's time for us to move to another level because... That's the controlling and killing part. I mean, that's the kind of alien well, mentality that's the part. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah, like Kiev. Nothing that's happening in Kiev is real. I have this link I'll send to you on my latest diary that shows that... Putin is manipulating this to cause the dollar to collapse. It's got A, B, C, D. There it is. And we're going to go through that change of currency shortly. And when we do, it's going to affect everybody. Do you think it's going to happen very, very fast? Yes. Like in weeks or days? I the reason know. I ask that is a very I heavy, don't know. There's a very heavy rumor going around that something yeah. is going to happen on Saturday. I mean, <laughs> 
We've heard these kind of rumors before. Well, it'll start on Saturday, and there will be layers of DEFCON 4, DEFCON 5, mm -hmm. DEFCON 3, you know, that kind of thing. You know, there'll be warnings and uh, milestones, milestones that change. Mm -hmm. And I have to wonder about geoengineering and the weird entities and garbage that's in our snow today. It's mm -hmm. weird. I mean, what's that about? And who's funding that? Well, that's a very interesting question. Follow the money, and the money might lead to, uh, you said before, nations, <laughs> international kind of entity <laughs> someplace. Um, maybe we don't want to go any specifics on this, but people should do some research. But it isn't the U.S. government, because the U.S. government ran no, out of money. No, it isn't the U.S. That. government. It's actually, I saw it in Mexico. I hear about it in Canada, Australia, Europe. It's everywhere. Who's paying for that? <laughs> My partner just saw a cockroach. <laughs> I don't know if you heard her say that. There are the uh, ones in control. If you were to actually do a count of how many ants live on your property, <laughs> who runs this world? You know, Michael Tobias wrote this book called Voice of the Planet, and you know about the snow leopard and all of that. And he said in his book that it was the methane from ants that's changing the biosphere, not man. From ants. Yeah. Well, that. How many ants are on your property? I've heard, I've heard the cow <laughs> thing. The ant thing is new to me. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Yeah, in terms of a collective consciousness in the soil, you know. <laughs> wow. There's a little crunching power there going on that's kind of interesting. Can we go to the stars and can we become godlike without becoming a hive mentality? Or do we have to do that first? Oh, how did the Borg put that one? Resistance is futile. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, I believe we already are. That's part of what dreaming and sorting out emotional states, coming back into this soup called consciousness. Okay, so, so, so that's yeah. the real part there. That's where I might... You know, because rules of engagement, I mean, that's kind of what I was going with that. Uh I don't want to distract you from Mexico if you want to talk about that some more. but Oh, no, we can do that another time, Michael. And this is always good because you actually pin it down with me pretty good, and I actually feel as if I've done the right message, you know, in terms of what's important, in terms of training your mind. I cannot stress that enough. And meditation is a good place. Hypnosis, meditation, uh, running, where our... You go into a different altered state, you know, with noradrenaline, serotonin, and, the, you know, that pumped up place. Yeah, and I, I learned that in university is that, you know, jogging is rhythmic breathing, and that's basically meditation. Well, you start there. That's why it's one of the chapters in my power tools. It's laying out the literal stages of different elements that you can use to integrate into becoming more complete as a human being. And uh, we have a responsibility <laughs> to do this for our well, children. That's, 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 I mean, I'm just kind of stuck with this concept now that you kind of gave me. Which is, <laughs> Sorry which about is that. This, no, which is this, uh, it's very interesting. I, I like playing with it. Um, the, the, the military, the, 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 the Dr. Rick Miller of 1975 or whatever it was, was the, yeah guy who was being dragged into the military he says no more killing and no more weapons he says i'm going somewhere else he, get, he becomes a farmer he grows things he looks got at the into soil. soil he gets a connection a going with, with mother myself. earth uh mm -hmm. finds the, the 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 mother father thing with uh i'm connected to the mother earth i'm you know i'm i want to see this business going on between the father son and mother earth with the plants uh, growth representing that connection. We've lost you, or uh, looks like we've lost you. Okay. How you doing? I'm okay. <laughs> I think I was getting a little bit of... Uh, it's still recording, by the way. I just lost your picture. I did, too. Yeah, I, I heard you clearly, but I lost your picture, yeah. Okay. Is we'll that look, Words uh, 8? Or not Words 8, Windows 8. Uh, I hate Windows 8. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I could... I could rant for a long time on that subject today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Microsoft, but, it's all about marketing. See, now, that's 
my camera's off. Oh, that's why I turned my camera off there. Uh, that's what is wrong now. It, that's an example of where things changed was they started doing Mopar, where you could time your battery when it would wear physically out, when a battery was dead, and now it's gone. You can set your watch to it. I mean, you know, that concept is what they've done in technology. They are no longer in advancing human beings. They are now about marketing and control. Yes, yes, exactly. That's what really bothers well, me about what Windows I want 8. It is, it is so, it wants so much control over my computer. It drives me nuts. Well, yeah. that's marketing. The idea and, and marketing is not real. You know, I remember when the DeLorean was the last automobile to be, you know, oh, it was made with real Mopar. <laughs> it was made with real parts. Uh, my 280Z is, uh, Probably the nicest thing I ever did for midlife crisis. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I driving my fast car and all of that. But it's real. It's made with metal. It's not plastic. Everything in it is uh, old school. And what I'm going to do this year as another small step for the children is I'm going to have a garden out here and back, you know, growing comfrey, and I'm going to convert my Z over to alcohol. Now that means I won't be able to drive my Z out of town. I'll have to keep it close to where my alcohol is until I have another little bunker up north of me that's also doing alcohol and then we can go visit each other and barter. <laughs> that's probably how it's going to work. And that will be one of the new infrastructures of the way, like what was it, Ernest Kallenbach and his Ecotopia? I grew up next door to Ernest Kallenbach. I was 10 years old and he had this little white picket fence that I used to go talk to him on. It was really cool. He taught me how to make birdhouses. <laughs> but he talked about the United States, a portion of the United States, it was the state of Jefferson, I believe, in his book, <laughs> that secedes from the Union and then opens their door in the year 19, what is that, two, year 2000, right, in the turn of the century. And that all transportation was through bicycles. You know, where when you went to go visit someone, it was an ordeal, it was a journey, and there was always a housewarming gift because what you did was required intent. And that's the part that we need to focus on is intentionality and why you would do something over something else. I haven't owned a car in 25 years, 30 years. <laughs> you live in Hong Kong. Uh, You've got I, bicycles and trains. I'm really into that. So... uh that's all uh, yeah. good for me. Yeah, I love, uh, Hong Kong is like Mexico City. I have never seen that many people in that sh small an area, and they were all either living on or next to the streets. I saw houses made with cardboard. I saw houses that were made from bed mattresses that were 20 and 30 years piled. I've never seen anything like that. But in Hong Kong, I mean, actually, the... Uh the, the, there is, uh, even though the costs are not crazy, um, they do actually try to look after poor people here, believe it or not, and they do That's a pretty it. good job. And another thing is, people lose face if they don't work, so uh, everybody the works here. Part. There's an ethics thing, yeah. That's all part of, you know, what the children learn by watching from example. And... Uh, so those old concepts of values are really important now. Hmm. That's And you know what you're supposed to do. You do. You probably have inside yourself, you know exactly what you should be doing. Why aren't you? And why it's, you know, <laughs> three milliseconds to midnight. <laughs> time for you to, <laughs> you know, time for you to pick it up, move it on, and teach the children how to do it. Because they're, it's not about education. It's How do we get them to listen, thing. Nick? How do we get huh? them to listen? You don't need to. They already are. They're watching why they don't want to do what you do. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> the best example I can provide is a bad example? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that's how it works. And, um, you know, try to be true to yourself, and that's a journey in itself. 
And once you've picked that message up, then it's pathworking. And that's where physics becomes magic with a mystery school. And you begin to become more indigenous like children are. Children are even more indigenous than aborigines. Explain. Explain. I'm not sure I follow that. Well, they're in more in tune with where they belong in the scheme of it all. They don't run it. They don't have the big playground cap, cap king of the hill. That's something they learn later. What they learn is how to play in the sand. And then there's a relationship between them and sand that is different, like on the beach and the castles that they build before the waves come in and take them away. It's not about the waves and the loss. It's about the moment and the relationship of that moment. And that is what I define as indigenous. When does work become play and play become work? Yeah, values. That's the other part of the equation. Where did your values come to make the distinction from one to the other? And, and the concept of money as a theatrical prop, uh, you know, what's real is labor. That's, la that, that's what's real. But... But the exchange of, well, I'll give you so many dinero for your, <laughs> you know, that part is the distraction of it. So caring has it, it, this, to do. this this alien thing that's about control and killing is also about money, isn't it? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's the illusion, and it, all of it is illusion. That's why I went into farming. I just turned it off. Didn't worry about Vietnam. That's you've got to realize. That's right during Vietnam. I was I know. in the seventies. I came out of graduate. I mean, came out of undergraduate school in '62. Okay, now that's when all my buddies went to Vietnam, trapped, mm -hmm. and were tunnel rats. Mm -hmm. And half my graduating class died over in Vietnam. That's me. And so I, the reason I'm here is because I had a 2S deferment and was a physicist. Making weapons. <laughs> and I looked at that and said, I, I'm not going to participate in war that direction. And then what they did is they changed the rules in physics. Hmm. Two? That's brain drain, you know, in the 80s, where it was no longer about new technology and discovery. It was about application and, uh, you know, it's harvesting. Used. Harvesting. That's Harvesting correct. all that wonderful We're interested knowledge. in evolving or getting better or smarter or knowing more in the 80s. That's where it all changed. And when transnational corporations actually began to take over, they started with the military, you know, Halliburton, whatever you want. Did you know that Halliburton is now bought up by Monsanto? That Halliburton what? belongs to Monsanto. <laughs> <laughs> ah! That's the truth. Check it out. And uh, I have to tell you, intentionality and the kinds of contracts you make with your Pope, where you let someone talk to God on your behalf, what the heck is that about? Mm. You know, the idea of giving responsibility that belongs to you to someone else to take care of for you. Now, organized religion has its place in society, but that's probably why it's also the last pope. Where everybody's going to wake up and talk to God themselves like that is their inalienable right. <laughs> In Contract. other words, that means start listening to God as well, doesn't it? Well, if you're listening to yourself, you can start there. What's important to you and why? Really, what's important to you? Not what you've been led to believe because of values and you know, the American dream, the harder you work, the more you have. <laughs> Good luck with that. And when I'm, we die, the one who wins is the one with the most toys. <laughs> well, you know, that's chaos and the pyramids and, uh, you know, the pharaohs. Good luck. <laughs> you know, that's good luck with that. Uh, you know, I believe now that I am truly becoming enlightened and that I see things very clearly as a scientist, which is almost an oxymoron, because, you know, <laughs> the scientist is uh, the leading religion of the world today. Let there be light, and the physicist went click, and it was light, and it was good. Uh, you know, that's crazy. 
none of this is real. What's real is your imagination. And if you direct that correctly, watch what you can do next. Uh, Rick, you, you, you're talking about scientists, and uh, also you were talking about Mexico. And I just had a note here. Um, I, I found some tweets from a guy called Paul Scheele. Oh, Paul Scheele. Scheele? Scheele, yeah. And he yeah, Paul had some Scheele very good things to say called, about uh, his conversations with you in Mexico. Can you talk about that at all? Well, Paul uh, and Libby, uh, Scheele, have uh, optical... Uh, learning concept. They've written about it. And it's very interesting. And what I do when I read something like, let's say Scientific American. I got this big thing. It's got all these, you know, a lot of writing. And what I do is I page to page and I have, I do that in, let's say, a 15 minute period where I just look at headers. It's a little line here, picture there, da 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 da. And my learning curve has increased 10 times over if I just read the article one moment and the next. And there, now, they, they got interested in me because that's how I do that. It's a dedic imaging as a little kid, which is the way all little kids are. And what they've got is a new learning system that will increase your ability for testing, uh, you know, like whatever you want to do, just by scanning something. You pick up keywords, your brain is putting things together in a form that is way better in terms of total grasp of something than if you were to uh, So is this, read. is this like the opposite of speed reading? It's similar to speed reading, but it's not. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's called optical learning. And uh, I'm not into Paul's things yet. I was deeply honored to meet him and, and Libby. Libby was... While I'm talking to Paul, she's over there with her little tablet drawing pictures of me, uh, you know, in motion or something. You know, it's interesting. She's an artist. And they have a very interesting, uh, what he does is he, he does a little play on stage of all the different components of the brain. And he has other people from the audience come up. Okay, now you're going to be the right right brain and you're the left brain. And now we're going to put the cerebral cortex here and we're going to put the... And, and then how they all start to dialogue with each other mm. to form consciousness. Mm. That, just the play, you know, with the little hats and the you know, things that they wear. So you know, does the alien frog. get in there? Does, you, you, so the alien who's invaded us or in, maybe even invaded our, our consciousness, um, is he part of that? I'd have to talk further to Paul on that. We never got into those <laughs> places. So well, I just wondered if we did. No, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, Paul is pretty enlightened. And, of course, we did a lot of things together. I've got some pictures. I'll send you some pictures of Paul and Libby. Uh, they, at, at, you know, when we were in this one restaurant. and uh, Or maybe I did already. Did I send you no, pictures I, of I, I don't think so. I'll get that off to you. Yeah, and there's a couple in there. And Paul and Libby are worth meeting. I met even Alexander. Even Alexander was uh, this neurosurgeon from North Carolina that had spiral meningitis and died and came back to life. And how it changed. He wrote a book called Proof of Heaven. Oh, and I uh, heard of this? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it's okay. I got to meet him, and he's talking about you know this this incredibly beautiful woman on on butterfly wing and that he's in yes, heaven yes, with. Yes, yes, I've heard this interview. Wonderful interview. And, he, and he, he called it his dead sister that he never met, knowing that. And I suggested to Paul that that dead sister was also his inner feminine part of self. That once you form union with the other part of yourself, that is what it's all, that's what uh, the Beatles hang up on you. Love is all there is, you know. That's exactly what it's about. There are different kinds of love. And uh, that's why the Greeks, which is a culture that we'll never ever have again, like Japan and Shogun, uh, will be historically Atlantis and another one that had a certain kind of quality of humanity that we may never ever have that nuance again. You know, it's Greece was... Uh, 
a very high level. Well, we you were down ancient in, ancient Greece or Greece yeah. fifty years ago. Ancient yeah, Greece. yeah, the Plato and yeah. uh, Socrates and the concepts of basic form and uh, uh, you know this is a society where mankind reached pinnacles that we haven't even begun to get close to yet here. Japan and the concepts of honor and sopaku, which is completely or you know ritual suicide when you bail. You know, that kind of thing. It's interesting, um, the different length, skirts, and widths of what honor and intent and all these different words that we have that make us human, what they actually mean on a personal level. And that's why my teacher, my dead teacher, uh, would say not to talk so much about interplane because I don't want to contaminate your own experiences, you know, by, you know, giving you my way of looking at things. But, so what I do is I try to write about them a little bit so that you have a roadmap. <laughs> Bordeaux to Dahl. Uh, you know, a little, you know, roadmap to Chicago. We, 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 we seem to have lost, um, leadership in many countries. Um, and yeah. leadership we can look up to. Um, how can we recreate that? <sighs> Sorry for that question. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's an important question. Um, you doing it yourself personally and your children seeing that and they will become leaders that integrate that. When I was in Mexico, I met a lot of very wealthy people. And none of them was oriented toward greed. Everybody there I met was spiritually a seeker. So, but, but I'm more. clearly you were in a pretty uh, rarefied, yeah, financially yeah. and also spiritually maybe uh, environment there. Well, um, I couldn't talk about the masses. However, apparently in the interview where the masses were listening to what I had to say, there was a resonance there as well about the children the family, and the importance of the mother. And we have lost that in America, which means that as they increase the difference between the middle class, the more they do that, the worse it's going to get for America because we have no infrastructure to fall back on. The children have no direction. And that's because the breakup of the family and everybody being selfish. And that's why I'm saying it is essential I get, I get that, Rick. I do get that, but I do think if you look at Black America, they have that. Yes, they do. Uh, in more than that. yes, actually, in fact, they do. Yes, and the Spanish, Hispanic. I when I was at the post office yesterday, uh, there was a Hispanic woman, and she's speaking, you know, Mexican mm -hmm. to her children, which is different than Spanish, and they were very happy. They were caught up in their own little universe, even though there's a long line and everybody's in there having to wait. You know, the U.S. government, I probably the U.S. Postal Service is the only thing the U.S. government ever did right. <laughs> <laughs> well, lost a lot of money. <laughs> and, and now they're trying to hamstring it and ruin it and uh, with, in Congress and so on. It, again, uh, I would be extremely suspect Obama is not a president any more than uh, Bush. Mm -hmm. There are transnational corporations that are running the show. And uh, I would really like to work out of the UN. My guess is there's more going on than we realize. More going on there. And why they would be shielding the light. Who's paying for all of that? You know, with what money? Scary, scary. I, I can make some, uh, I can make some I, guesses, but they're not they're not going to be fruitful, and they'll just yeah. irritate people. So I won't. But uh, well, it's a good area yeah. to study. It's one that I'm finding more and more interesting, and I don't know where it's going to lead me. I am right now uh, spending a little more time on the bloodlines of Europe and the dragon and dragon family and that element. It's interesting. There's a lot of disinformation out there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, uh, that's another heavy rumor that's going on right at this moment. That uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. The, I don't know if you know, have you ever heard of the Swiss Indo group? Um, yeah. But they're having a meeting right now, at this moment, um, in Indonesia, 
and uh, supposedly they have some money that's going to come out. Um, there are other groups around that are talking about prosperity funds and so forth. I um, actually like hangthebankers.com. <laughs> I, well, that's a, they went out and they hung all their bankers in public and then gave the money to all the people having mortgages. They did that in Iceland. Yeah. And I think there's something to be learned about that kind of thing. That's one of the reasons my Red Queen wants to go climb a mountain over there. She thinks it's a cool place to be. You know, the mentality, the way of thinking. Basically, the United States is ill-informed, ignorant, and kind of uh, stupid in many ways in our choices of what's important. I think it's not going to stay that way. I think people are going to look into the abyss, stare into the abyss, and it will stare back. <laughs> <laughs> like we and, the dot, yeah, and temporary. They'll, <laughs> and they'll realize that uh, they've got to pull themselves out of the mess they're in. And uh, we'll begin to see uh, a lot of change. I'm kind of waiting for that and also kind of expecting it to start this year. Uh, maybe the drop in the dollar is going to trigger some positive things in the country. Um, but, Rick, I think these are things we can talk about next time. Yeah. Uh, this has yeah. been a really good chat. I'm stay tuned as I grow. <laughs> like a <word. laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed this one because um, we've kind of been going around, but in a way we've been talking about the same thing. And... Um, I already have an idea for the title for this particular one. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll, I'll put it up, assuming the recording works. Uh, n yeah. Next time, maybe we can talk. At some point, I really want to talk about Yuri Geller. And, uh, oh, sure. I'd be happy uh, to. And, and Andrija, Andre, am I Andrei Pukhach. Yeah. I presume uh -huh. both of those guys are people that you'd be happy to talk about. Oh sure, uh, Andre Pukharik is probably as, yeah. as interesting <laughs> as, as as Geller is in some ways, maybe more. Uh, but I think you probably knew them both. Is that right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bill Hartz was my teacher uh, at that time. Bill Tiller was under him, and that's how I got to know Bill and several other of the people you know associated at SRI and, before and, Rich and. and uh, put off and others joined in. And the other thing is that that, that leads us straight into Iceland, actually, because uh, Puharik, and I don't know if you were there, I wanted to ask you, Puharik um, wrote a, a book, edited a, a book about, it's called the Icelandic Papers. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. No, I'm not. Um, but it, I'll, it, 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 was, I'll, I'll send you a note on that, but it's but it, was, yeah, it, it was the first, it was the first, um, Scientific exploration uh, published, I think, about remote viewing. You know, um, speaking of that, that's in the 80s. Uh, Puharich, that was in the 80s. That was not the 70s. Um, Puharich uh, had a girlfriend. And when he died, she acquired some unpublished manuscripts. She lives up in Boston. Wow. And, yeah, so there's some unpublished works of Andre Puharich available for a publishing house that might be interested. I can hook up anybody that's interested. Pugh Harich, in my opinion, was a very great scientist. He was one of my teachers, like Dr. Stanley Krippner. I got to spend time with Stan down in Mexico. That was interesting. You know, we, <laughs> especially having to go on that that hike that we did. That, unbelievable. It's uh, Yeah, I have lots of more I could talk about. But uh, Andrea Pugh Harich discovered Yuri Geller uh, as a real phenomenon. And what happened was that Geller started hanging out with a bunch of wealthy women, and his abilities were not something that he had control of, which means that when they wanted him to demonstrate something, he started cheating. And what that did is it contaminated all the valid research that had been done with the baby in the bathwater. And that's a shame. That's where the ego part came in again, you know, where he, you know, couldn't just do it. Bending spoons is easy. There's techniques for doing that. He actually could do things, and that's why Pugh Harich found him interesting. But there are other people like him. There's Keith Milton Reinhardt of the Aquarian Foundation. Helmut Schmidt and I did some studies on him. And let me tell you, I've got some serious stories about his concepts 
not reading minds either. He's doing something way different than that. That's how one of the isolation of variables I did to make certain. And uh, there are others like him. I remember Jack Schwartz of Lithia Foundation and uh, Manager Foundation when we actually tried to, you know, this guy could stick a needle through his arm and stop the bleeding. You don't think the military wanted to know how to do that? How that works, you know, that was like. <laughs> I think that's a great, a great kind of teaser, and maybe a good place for us to, to sure. turn to. And this, and um, you know, because I, I think that's something that we can talk about for quite some time, especially when well, it comes to the Yeah, yeah, what's involved and what's not, and what we know and what we don't know. You know, what we don't know is how to ice, which, which variables are important. And uh, isolation of the different variables, and then being able to test them, see how they change things. Um, that's interesting. That's what I used to do. It's always a pleasure. Great, great, great for me too. I really enjoyed it. And I'll, uh, you know, gods of technical being with me. It's a new computer. It's new <laughs> software. So, if yeah. everything goes right, we'll have a nice uh, recording up on oh. YouTube real soon. Yeah. Thank, thanks again. I look forward to my pleasure, time. Michael. Thank my you for having.